Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. We begin with Allah's blessed name. We praise Him and we glorify Him as He ought to be praised and glorified. And we pray for peace and for blessings on all His noble messengers, including the last of them all, the blessed Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. As we greet you with Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh here from my sitting room in my home in my native Caribbean island of Trinidad. And uh, if you have not heard from me, if I have not spoken before on the subject of Ukraine, <laughs> it's because my daughter has been busy in, uh, and uh, with us exams and so on. And uh, now we have the time for me to offer a second comment on the Russian military intervention in Ukraine. And uh, in the first re response, we quoted the Arab proverb, which I, which I recommend that you use from now on until the end of the story. Al-Kafila uh, Tustasir. The caravan is moving on. And the, even though the dogs keep on backing, the caravan is moving on. This is an Arab proverb and it pictures perfectly the situation now with Russia and uh, its intervention in Ukraine. It's a, what they call it, a game changer. The, the entire world order is now in a state of transition. This is what we said on the last occasion. For the last uh, uh, 300 years, the world has experienced those who possess power. Power was used to oppress. 300 years of oppression. 300 years of war, 300 years of regime change, gunboat diplomacy, 300 years of military oppression, political oppression, economic oppression. This is what the world has experienced these last 300 years, although some add nine to the 300. Now we are saying to you, this is our Islamic eschatological analysis that we are seeing a game changer. We are seeing an old world, an old world order coming to an end and a new world order replacing it in which power, which used to be found, uh, founded on godless foundations, resting on godless foundations, and that power was used to oppress. Now, <coughs> excuse me, now we see power resting on foundations of faith and that power is now used to resist the oppressor and to seek to liberate the oppressed from the oppression. This is the fundamental change now taking place in the world. And in my last response, I turned to, to, to Surah al -Kaf and to the great traveler, Zulkarnain. And I have consistently refrained from identifying Zulkarnain with Alexander or with Darius or with Cyrus or anyone. I have consistently refrained from doing that. Others have done it, I have not. And I have said that Karnain can mean either two horns or two different generations, two different people, two different times. Now listen carefully. Let me repeat one more time. Proper methodology is that if a word occurs in the Quran, let the Quran explain it. Has the Quran ever used the word karn to mean a horn? The answer is no. Hence, we are on firm foundations when we say Zulkarnain refers to two generations two people, two times in history. 
are you listening? I'm speaking slowly. Even that, even so, they will not listen to me. The first occasion is described, the first karn is described in the Quran. And in the first karn, we identified Ainun Hamia, a body of water which was dark and murky when Zulkarnain traveled in the direction of the setting of the sun. We said that the famous commentator of the Quran, Ibn Kathir, he's not the only one, there are others as well, who identified that body of water <coughs> with the black sea, excuse me. And we have done the same thing. And the, the body of water on the left side, the western, was the, was the black sea, and on the right side, the Caspian Sea, in between the Caucasus Mountains. So it was there at the Black Sea that Allah spoke to Zulkarnain and said, how will you use your power? Because Allah gave him power to do whatever he chose to do. And his power rested on the foundations of faith. All of this is so easy to understand, except there are people today who have lost the capacity to understand. And so what do we do with them? The answer is, you leave them and move forward. What do you do with those people, Zulkarnain? And he said, I'm going to use that power to punish those who are wicked, those who are oppressors. And I will use my power to help and to reward those who have faith and whose conduct is righteous. And then, <coughs> when the second current is to come, we look again to the region of the Black Sea. And when we see power emerging in the region of the Black Sea, and that power resting on foundations of faith, we know this is the second current. And power will now be used to resist the oppressor and to liberate the oppressed and to help and to reward those who have faith and whose conduct is righteous. Zulkarnain, of course, after he traveled in the direction of the rising of the sun, he then went on a third journey which took him to Gog and Magog. And there are those who are adamant, obstinate, what can you do? No, 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 Gog and Magog are behind that barrier and they will not be released until Jesus, the son of Mary, returns and he kills the child. So leave them. They are a hopeless people. Just leave them with their views and we will, we will go to the Quran and let the Quran explain. Zulkarnain builds a barrier and he contains Gog and Magog. Gog and Magog are human beings. That's right. They're human beings because they commit something called fasad. Angels don't do that. The jinn can do it and human beings can do it. But Gog and Magog cannot be jinn. Why? Because when Zulkarnain built the barrier built with blocks of iron, he was able to contain them, but a jinn could pass through the iron barrier. So Gog and Magog have to be human beings. This is simple analysis, but there are people who have lost the capacity to think, what can we do? So when Allah brings down the barrier, then Gog and Magog will be released. And that happened in the lifetime of the Prophet Then we left Surah al kaf and we went to Surah al anbiya I'm repeating what I said on the last occasion. But even if I repeat it a hundred thousand times, it still, still will not penetrate them. They cannot understand it. They will never accept it. That Allah speaks of a town, He destroyed the town, He expelled the people, and then He placed a ban on them that they could never return to this town to reclaim it as their own until Gog and Magog are released. And then when they are released, they spread out all over the world. And so with their 
irresistible power because Allah says in the Hadith of Qudsi, I have created creatures of mind so powerful, none but I can destroy them. Speaking about Gag and Magag, this is in Sahih Muslim. So even Zulkarnain cannot destroy Gag and Magag. Nobody can do it, but he can build a barrier to contain them. When Gog and Magog are released and they spread all over the world, then you will see these people being brought back to reclaim that town as their own. Oh, which town is it? I said it's Jerusalem. And I can say it a hundred thousand times in Jerusalem, they will never accept it. So one more time, leave them, let's move forward. When Gog and Magog brought the Jews back to Jerusalem to reclaim Jerusalem as the whole. When did that happen? Who did it answer? It was modern Western civilization which did it. And so those who control power in the modern West, they are Gog and Magog. And they are the ones who these last 300 years, not only did they bring the Jews back to Jerusalem to reclaim it as their own? And they did it <laughs> with a mountain of lies and a sea of blood. That's how they did it. But they have also been oppressing mankind. But there are two forces in the world, two forces in the world, which are designed to liberate Jerusalem from that oppression. And they are the followers of Muhammad, Allah's blessing be upon him, Prophet Muhammad, and the followers of Jesus, the true Messiah. The alliance of Muslims and Christians, which will liberate Jerusalem, is already taking place now. And what we are seeing now is a fulfillment of a prophecy of the Quran. Yes, a prophecy of the Quran. Not only is Russia returning to her orthodox Christian heart, having been relieved of the atheist Soviet Union, the world's most famous atheist state, but Russia now is returning to her orthodox Christian heart. This is something Every believer should welcome, except those whose hearts are filled with hatred, only hatred, hatred, hate. The hatred is consuming them. They hate Russia. They hate the Orthodox Christians. They wish they could have succeeded in Syria with the bogus jihad, so they could have slaughtered all the Christians. Pathetic people, pathetic people, yeah. leave them. Russia is returning to her Orthodox Christian heart. And Russia has been blessed by the Lord God with power, military power. It is because of that phenomenal military power that Russia now possesses that the world is seeing something extraordinary. Normally, they would have already attacked Russia. The war would have already started. This is what we have had for 300 years. How come? They cannot even impose a no-fly zone over Ukraine because they say that will risk war. We really prefer to wage war on Libya, but not on Russia. And so we are seeing now a change in the world order. For the first time, there is a power in the world capable of resisting the oppression. And so we look forward now to a future where the world order that is, that is to come will be one in which increasingly power will be used, power resting on the foundations of faith. Power will be used not to join NATO as Turkey has done, but rather power will be used to resist the oppressor. And NATO is the world's biggest oppressor today. I am not exaggerating when I say this. NATO is the world's biggest oppressor all these last year, few decades. So power will now be used increasingly in the world to resist the oppressor. 
and to liberate the oppressed. This must be music in the uh, in the ears of Malcolm X if he was alive today. Yes, if he was alive today, Malcolm. The power in the world is now being used to liberate the oppressed, to resist the oppressor, to reward and to help those who have faith and whose conduct is righteous, exactly as Allah has spoken in Surah Al-Kafir of the Quran. And so this is good news for Dumbas. They spent some five billion dollars to bring about a color revolution in Ukraine in 2014. They thought we succeeded. Our money was well spent. I wonder how much they're spending to try to remove Imran Khan <laughs> as Prime Minister of Pakistan. We always have traitors in our midst who can be bought with US dollars. What can we do? So they spent some five billion dollars to bring about a color revolution in Ukraine. And the government which was friendly to Russia was replaced with a government which is hostile to Russia. And now Ukraine, which is an Orthodox Christian country, is led by a Jew, a Jewish president over a new, <laughs> an Orthodox Christian country. What strange things are happening in the world today. But Donbass said, we cannot accept this your color revolution. We are not prepared to submit to it. And for seven years, they persecuted and they terrorized and they oppressed the people of Donbass, who were Russian speaking. And Russia said, now enough is enough. And Russia has now intervened. Why? To liberate the people who are being oppressed from oppression. That's why. And if you don't like that, go back to school. This world is a moral order. And the moral law is the highest law. They forget when they teach international relations in the universities. They forget that there is an actor in the affairs of the world, an actor who never sleeps. <laughs> Neither does he sleep nor does he ever get tired. The Lord God is an actor in the affairs of the world. You cannot forget him. He intervenes in the historical process. And now when Russia decided we enough is enough, we're going to protect our people from oppression. Russia realized if you to intervene in Donbass alone, the Western world, NATO would have flooded Ukraine with weapons and arms and everything they wanted. And the war would last for years and years and years. So Russia had to take over the whole of Ukraine in order to be able to save Donbas. And they have already succeeded in phase one of their, of their intervention. And that is that Ukraine does not have the capacity to wage any kind of resistance to Russia other than simple, pathetic little uh, fighting on the ground. There's nothing in the sky, nothing in the, in the sea to, to be able to, to resist Russia. So phase one is successful already. And now Russia is moving to phase two to liberate the entire territory of Donbas. And for that, there's going to be some fighting. But uh, we, I want to leave the military part of the analysis because Russia is showing her capacity to pursue her objective to the end. And uh, Russia has also said, we're not going to leave until Ukraine commits itself to be a neutral state. It will never, never join NATO. But the people of the Western world and also the rest of the world who are now suffering and who will suffer even more as a consequence of the response of the West to Russia's intervention in Ukraine, they will now have to ask themselves, why is it that we have to suffer? Because they say 
No, 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 Ukraine has the right to join NATO. No, 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 Ukraine has the right to join NATO. No, 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 Ukraine has the right to join NATO. And because of that, the whole world must now suffer. But Ukraine will have to humble itself. Ukraine will have to submit. There's no other alternative. Ukraine will have to submit and to accept that we will be a neutral state. And so no joining of NATO. All the whole world suffering because of this stupidity. <laughs> Ukraine has the freedom to join NATO. So guess what to happen now? Hmm? It is not the military uh, affairs and the strategic affairs that I want to discuss. What I want to discuss is the sanctions which have been imposed on Russia as a consequence of Russian military intervention in Ukraine. And my response is that it is shameful, it is disgraceful, and it is manifestly sinful to use trade as a weapon of war, to use business as a weapon of war, to use food as a weapon of war. You have to be a people with absolutely no moral consciousness whatsoever. It was the kofar, the mushrikeen, the idolaters of Mecca. They were the ones who imposed an economic boycott on Prophet Muhammad and his small band of Muslims for three years. Economic boycott, and we suffered. We suffered. But we never, never in our history, we have never used trade as a weapon, not this civilization. We've never used business as a weapon. We've never used food as a weapon. You have to be scandalously so, an absolutely godless people to impose economic sanctions as a weapon of war. And this is sinful. People are going to be suffering now because of your stupid stupidity in imposing economic sanctions on Russia, monetary sanctions as well. In the process of trying to hurt Russia with your sanctions, destroy Russia with your sanctions, you are destroying your own selves because what you're doing is sinful. And in Surah Al-Rahman of the Quran, the Lord God has said that he's going to intervene. He spoke 31 times. You are violating, you are, disp you are rejecting the signs of the Lord God. You're rejecting truth. You're embracing falsehood and oppression. And there'll come a day when the Lord God is going to intervene. It's coming soon, the great war. And in that great war, the Lord God has said, I urge you to read my little book, the Quran, the Great War and the West. Sanafrugalakum Ayyuhasakalan, the Lord God is going to intervene and He's going to deal with you because you are laden with sin. Laden with sin. That's the modern West, those who control power. When will the Great War take place? My answer, which will surprise you, is that the legal state of war has already commenced. That when you're imposing these sanctions and seizing Russian property, seizing Russian money, stealing it, you, you are declaring war. That's what they've done to Russia. I think $300 billion worth of Russian money stolen. Hmm? frozen, uh, Russian property, Russian aircraft, they're just seizing them, freezing them. 
He, this is a declaration of war. Mm -mm. Russia cannot sell her oil. Russia cannot sell her, her wheat, her food. It is uh, something commendable. And we have to give credit where credit is due. That India, the Indian government, has so far resisted these Western sanctions. And the, the, West, the Indian government is prepared to continue doing business with Russia. And for this, we must commend the Indian government, regardless of what our cricket critics may say. But what I want to say concerning the Great War is not only that the legal state of war has already commenced, but also that Russia has the right to choose the time of his own choice to commence the fighting. Because you are strangulating Russia. And when someone is being strangulated, you put a rope around his neck and you're tightening it. He is the one who will decide when he will choose to decide what to do to remove the rope from among it. It's not you who will decide when the war will take place. He will decide because you're strangling him, strangulating him. If he has the power to remove the rope from around his neck and dispose of those who are attacking him, then he will choose the time to do it. So I don't know when Russia will do it. But I want to end this talk by saying, not only are economic sanctions sinful, prohibited by the Islam, prohibited by the Quran, prohibited by the Prophet we are a people who stand for a free and a fair market. And even when war is taking place, the free and the fair market must remain. The only thing that we will prohibit is trade in weapons of war when a war is taking place, that's all. Other than that, the free and fair market must continue even when a war is taking place. This is Islam. And our Christian brothers, I'm sure, would agree with us that weapon, that trade and business and food must never become a weapon of war. So you are strangulating Russia. This is sinful. And the Lord God is going to intervene when the war takes place. And perhaps it is Russia who will decide when the war will begin, the fighting will begin. I don't think it will take much time for the war to be over. But our prophet has prophesied. They're going to be fighting for the mountain of gold. Because what the sanctions are doing is the sanctions are causing the monetary system the collapse is already vulnerable, the petrodollar monetary system. And I gave my interpretation of the Hadith long, long years ago. Our Prophet said that the, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that the river Euphrates will uncover a mountain of gold. And people will fight for the gold. And 99 out of every 100 would, who fight for that gold will be killed, but the believers must not touch the gold. The sheep and the cattle can continue to sit on a sofa waiting for a mountain of the metal to come out from underneath the river. Let's leave them, leave them. We say, no, this is Mutashar Bihar. It was in 1974, an ocean of oil underneath the river began to function as a mountain of gold when the petrodollar mo monetary system was, bo was created by Henry Kissinger. When oil was sold for only US dollars. And they accepted that. That caused the US dollar to survive for so long. And today Russia says we will not sell our oil for except for rubles. It's the same thing. And now you want to... <laughs> You want to condemn them for what you were doing all this time? So, so in Africa, the Kobe, you got Sakalan. Ninety-nine out of every one hundred will be killed in that war. And I am saying to you, the ninety-nine will be from the West. Russia will survive, and Russia will win the war. That's right. And the world after the Great War is the one in which Muslims must be concerned about. 
because after the Great War, our prophet prophesied the next event would be the conquest of Constantinople. I want to leave you now with this, that you have to prepare yourself for the conquest of Constantinople, which is an event prophesied by Nabi Muhammad which will take place after the Great War. Apart from the sheep and the goats who believe that the Great War took place 600 years ago, leave them, they're nonsense. We know the Great War has not as yet taken place. When the Great War takes place, it's going to be a nuclear war. When the Great War takes place, the next event after that will be the conquest of Constantinople. And I want to leave you with this because I want to speak another occasion on that subject of the conquest of Constantinople. Thank you. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.